My name is Legion because there are many selves inside of me. Sometimes, frequently, that's us. We present ourselves as one self to our boss at work. But there's another self who goes to eat lunch with our friends. You know, my wife sees one side of me, but my children see another side. And when I come to church, oh my, I'm so good. And there's another self. We've just got all of these people in us. And when we look at the mirror in the morning, you know, do we really know who we are? And we're unable sometimes to identify the real us. Do any of you all remember the book and the movie back in the 70s, Sybil? Lady that had 16 or 17 different personalities. And if you ever want to get a little bit wound up, read or watch Sybil. Anyway, at one point in their conversation, the man who had come running to Jesus for help even shouted, Jesus, you have come to torment me too, just like everybody else. Is that why you're here? But we know that that's not what Jesus does. Jesus doesn't torment us. What does Jesus do? He heals us, friends. And he delivers us. He does not judge and he does not punish. And so Christ caused this man's illness to enter the whole herd of pigs. And immediately they dropped to the side of the jump, ran to the side of the cliff, jumped in the water, and they were drowned. And then Jesus probably looked at the man and he said, Look, down there, your sins and your infirmities are all down at the bottom of the water. They're drowned. They cannot bother you anymore. And pretty soon, the people found the man. And he had on all of his clothes, and he was just as normal as any of us. And that's scary. Anyway, the people had a reaction, didn't they? They reacted to it. And when they heard about it, what did they say to Jesus? We want some of that? No. They said, you, Jesus, get out of town. We'd rather have the pigs here than you. Well, we know, the fact is, that whenever Jesus is not wanted, what does he do in the Bible? He shakes the dust from his cloak, and he goes. He's gone. But before he left, he gave... He gave the garrison demoniac some instructions. He said, go home, friend. Go home and witness. Well, if you don't know it, and you probably do, home is the hardest place there is in the world to witness. But not only did that man go home and witness, he went to ten other towns as well. And he had quite a dramatic conversion story to tell. And the cool thing about it, he was not ashamed to tell you. And then there's the woman that Mark read to us about a minute ago. Because of her disease, she had been a social outcast. She had consulted with all the best doctors about her physical condition. And no success. Twelve years she'd spent talking about how sorry the doctors were. How they just couldn't do anything. And they had failed her. And sometimes it's like people in the church and sometimes it's like people who say, I don't need to go to church. And they talk about the church. And they talk about the poor choir or the long-winded Sunday school teacher and the even longer-winded preacher. The bad programming and the inadequate leadership and the fact that the church was filled with hypocrites. The woman with the disease was not pleased. And nothing she could find earthly would satisfy her or heal her until, until she met Jesus. And he had a good word about a good life and a good God that could be hers. And she accepted it. And she was healed. Her demon was driven away simply by coming to know Jesus. And not only does Jesus tell it like it is, He tells it like it can be. 
And here we are in our church, and here are churches completely surrounding us in our neighborhood and worldwide. And all of us need to face the problems that we have in the churches. But we'll never get along. We'll never get new members by talking about how bad it is. It would far be much better to talk about what the church can become, what it can be in Christ. And it's better for us to invite others to come and discover the difference that Jesus makes. Everything and everyone had failed this woman until Jesus gave her the courage to reach out to God simply, simply by touching the hem of his garment and instantly she was healed. That's great. Just think about the power that radiates from Jesus. Just think about the power we can have if we hold people up to the light of Christ and let them see what he can do for them. The miracle of sharing our faith in Christ is this, that whenever we show Christ to others, our reality of him becomes larger. So many accounts, so many accounts in the Bible of people that met Christ and were changed when they needed him the most. Remember what Jesus said to that Gerasene demoniac. Return to your own house and tell what great things God has done for you. So, my sermon title this morning, How Do I Give Thanks? Hear the words of Jesus. Go. Go. Tell what God has done for you. That's what He wants us to do. That's what He expects us to do. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit.